Hey, it's Joel. I'm here at World Maker Fair. Woo! No, no. You were shouting so loud that the balloon just popped. I popped a balloon with my voice. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joel. You have some wonderful, crazy new machines. You're actually going into a non-FDM way of doing things, which I want to talk about. But first, you broke the internet earlier with the announcement of Prusament. Yes. So it's uh, filament plus Prusa. So Prusament. That's the final name. Uh, yes. No, nobody uh, came up with better one. Anybody and their brother right now seems to either be producing filament or relabeling filament. So given the Prusa name, that'd be you, okay. what what about it is so special? Why would someone want to say, you know what, I'm going to choose Prusament over other filament? So uh, during the first multi-material, we found out that a lot of people claim uh, you know, specs for filament, but they usually don't check it well. So that was causing a lot of jams. So that Oh, yeah. Is that, that's what was happening. You were getting jams because of the filament out of spec. Yes. Back then, we got an idea that we should do it like proper way. So we ordered five lines. So we've been playing with them for a year. So we for uh, we started with our orange PETG for for our print farm. We learned a lot. Then we started to do the silver be included with the printers. So some of the Mark three orders already received persimmon without even knowing it. That's sneaky. Yes. Uh, and uh, actually, if you if you have a spool from us and there's a little QR code on it with ID, uh, you can go on the prusament.com and check uh, check the birth certificate of it. Oh, so you can actually find the the life of the spool and where it began and how it was made is available by clicking or photoing the QR code and taking you to a website. And if if you go to the prusament.com, there are there is a simple spool available, so you can check it. And well, the point is that we are making uh, 20 micron or better. Uh, or better. Yes, because with 50 microns, uh, even if it even if it's done properly with 50 microns, you can have 11.4 uh, percent uh, difference in volume of extrusion. 50 microns will not jam, even if it's manufactured to spec. There's still 11.4 difference in volume between the min and max. So if you if you start printing on the low side and you finish the print on the high side, it can create you know some artifacts on the object or you know if when you are, when you have the top layer you can have like little holes in it and it's very hard to calibrate so we are aiming for uh, 20 microns or better especially so we have you know beefed up server with seven cores and it's doing the analysis of all the data and if there is you know a peak so if it goes out of the spec the spool is rejected and because the 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 whole line is robotized uh, automated uh, you said robotized. That's fantastic. I mean, we have robotic arms uh, handling the spools and everything, so it gets rejected. So there's no way how it could get to the customer. It sounds brilliant what you're doing with the filament, but how are you going to get it into the hands of people, and how are you going to compete with other filaments? Well, compete with other filaments. That is basically the price, and we are starting at twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five dollars a kilogram. A kilogram, yes. Usually on the spool there is something like 1,050 grams, so you have 50 grams extra. Uh, you could print a little little thing to remember the color by, maybe. Yes, yes, maybe. And at the end of the production, if everything goes smoothly, uh, laser etches a QR code on the spool. So when you open it, uh, it's also on the box, and you can see the graph here. But on the website, it's uh, in more detail, and you can hover over the line and see the exact measurement. And this is available for each and every spool. That's a lot of spools, Joe. That's, you know, 30 tons of spools every month. So people are going to ask, with the Master Spool Initiative, people having spool refills, is this going to be available as a Master Spool Refill? So uh, we want to have very nice uh, winding on the spool. So that is not very possible with the Master Spool. Yeah, and this is pretty nice. That's a pretty nice wind. Yes. And as it's done by robots, every, every single spool is the same. But uh, it's using 45% less uh, plastic. Oh, than, that's great. Than normal spools. And actually, it, is, it has cardboard core. So we can theoretically ship it with the, uh, with the cardboard core. And you, and you just unsnap the sides from this and put them on. OK. Yeah. But uh, and I, think, I think theoretically it should be compatible with the normal master spools too. But we are not there yet. I saw on your press release it will be available through your website. Through my website. And Amazon? Amazon US, uh, hopefully in a month. So you can have it with sweet prime shipping. Oh, so Amazon prime shipping just in time for Christmas. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I don't, we, 
So we, we sold our first batch in like half a day. So <laughs> you got to get back home to make more. Yes, I'm. Oh, wait, it's robots. Robots are making it, right? But uh, I forgot to tell one thing. Sorry. During the manufacturing, we are not only checking the diameter. We uh, made uh, a device which actually checks uh, the color in the real time. If the spool doesn't have consistent color, it is also rejected. And you're just—is that—is that a camera or some sort of, uh, or is that—or is it a secret thing? Uh, it's a special sensor. It's used in automotive. We had to we had to modify to have the online measurements uh, throughout the whole spool. So we also have that data. This is great. This is great for all of the FDM needs that people have, especially with the the Mark III, the new MMU 2.0. But but let's let's get rid of that because you have these new machines. Look at these. You're you're now getting into the resin printing game. What is yes. what th th what's the story here? Okay, we are pretty good with FDM printers. What pretty pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good. So what should we what should we do next? So first idea I was the procurement and then we uh, started to think about the resin printers. And uh, there is uh, or there was a company in Czech Republic called Fooder 3D which were doing uh, pretty good printers but been uh, in a low volume. So I acquired them and that's roughly a year ago, and we started to work on a new model. Oh, you didn't just take what they had and put Prusa on it. No. You got them and then did further development. Yes, yes. We, we further developed it because we have over 40 developers already. So, you know, the power of all the developers is invested uh, into this. You can pre-order it uh, right now. Uh, shipping when? Uh, shipping for the fully assembled one starts in December. Okay, so in time for the new year. Yes. People will get them. And for the kits, uh, it's starting in January. It is uh, LCD uh, SLA. It has 5.5-inch uh, uh, LCD. You can take your smartphone out, and that's pretty much uh, how big the model can be. Okay. So, you know, that is uh, pretty standard. But what is special about this one, it's uh, made from milled aluminum, so it has very, very, very sturdy frame. And that is needed because we have the tilt on the platform, which helps with the peeling from the FEP film. So the, the tilt happens after each layer, right? So nothing is sticking to the film? Yes. So it is preventing the model to come loose uh, from the build platform. I was talking to Michael, and he said he worked on the resin sensor. Is that right? That is also one of the unique features. So when you are pouring the resin in, the printer knows uh, how much you put in if you have it for, for the full model. Or if it's running out during the print, uh, you can the printer can ask for more. What's the slicer for this? Are, are you outfitting Slicer Prusa Edition or is this a completely new slicer? Uh, so we, it is being uh, built into the slicer. So you can you know, have Mark III, prepare the files for the Mark III, you can switch to SL1 and you can produce uh, print files for this. Resin printing has been one of those things where it's either been too expensive or it, it hasn't worked well or it's been too messy. Yeah. So. People are going to say, Joe, what are you doing about the safety of resins and handling of resins? What are you going to do about the ease of use and the cleanup? How are you handling that side of things? We have the active uh, filtration system. So you have uh, back, back here, there is a filter from active charcoal. So it gets, rid, it gets rid of the fumes. Or you can replace it and have a hose out of the window. So it shouldn't, uh, it, it shouldn't smell or, it, or at least very much reduce the, the smell of the printing. Okay. And during the printing process, you don't have to touch the resin. So uh, I don't have the build platform, but you can see it here. Uh, you, when, when, the, when the print finishes, you can just take it out. And we also made a curing and washing machine, which is this. Does the build platform go from the SL1 to this machine? You take it here, uh, you put the platform uh, on this, uh, close it, and then when you open the curing and washing machine. You just put it uh, here, and it's uh, like a magnetic stirrer. So this one is full of IPA, so it cleans the model off. And when you are finished with cleaning, you can just take the clean platform. Oh, I, I took it off. <laughs> <laughs> Those magnets, man. Completely, yes. So you put it on the on this and close it and there is a UV LEDs and it will cure uh, and it will do the post curing. Well I see you have a reflective material on the inside so the yes. UV light is yes. 360 around the entire you model. Just close it and then it starts uh, the curing process. It, it is not included, it is extra, but I think it's uh, pretty uh, pretty nice. Well, 
Well, See? for anyone that's uh, like an educational environment, I think something like this yeah. is essential because it provides more stability in the models being finished and cured and, and people aren't going to have to touch it as much. Yes. Well, I would still suggest to wear gloves. Does it ship with gloves? We will include few, just for you. Oh, you heard it here first. <laughs> wow. Man. Uh, there's a lot of information. I bet I forgot something. So probably, but if you if you did, and people wanted to say, "Hey, Joe, you forgot. You didn't mention something," and they wanted more information, where could they go to find out about these machines and the Prusament? So all uh, both of the releases they are on prusaprinters.org. We are gearing up for the manufacturing for at, at least 500 every month. So just just a start. Eventually, it'll be thousands, right? Yeah, but you know, we we released uh, two hours ago, and I. <laughs> I think that we need to step up the parts orders. Well, and someone tweeted, uh, your website was 503. You exceeded your bandwidth or something. Yes, yes. This, this happened uh, for the second time in the last two days. Joe, you broke the internet. Hey, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, happy Maker Faire, and uh, let's get a good thumbnail.